Hello and welcome to this very morbid episode of Stage of the Game. Death. This, yeah, this week you have myself and Jesse. What up? Tony is still busy. He's in tech for Greece, which is a terrible show. I'm sure his production will be fine, but it's a terrible stage musical. Yes. The movies, the movies good. Whatever. Stage musical. So Sucks. The movie's better, but they're both horrible. Please, young girls, do not change for Don't your man. Don't settle. <laughs> there are a lot change, of fish so in the ocean. I should. You don't have to just look in your high school. Exactly. Don't take up smoking for <laughs> a guy. <laughs> to impress a guy. Not if you don't even like smoking. Also, 40-year-olds shouldn't be playing high schoolers. Also, it's just too uplifting. <laughs> and the ending was weird. Hey, it's been real, isn't this whole thing? Hey, we're going to get in this car and we're going to fly away uh, into the sky. Cause I like to think, a as a segue, that they died. <laughs> and that's why the car can fly. <laughs> they died from smoking. Which they were too young to be doing. And now they're free. Well, Speaking of death, that, speaking of death, that's what this episode's going to be about. Death. We're going. Oh, he said about... I could pick. Yes, I gave Jesse the option of uh, three different uh, categories, to, to, the topics to discuss for this week. I won't tell you the other two because we'll probably use them for another other episodes. But death was one of them, and Jesse loving death, for morbid theater as much as I do. <laughs> Dark theater. For everyone. So we're going to be discussing uh, deaths that particularly uh, like stuck with us in like in deaths pertaining to theater and video games. So people, characters, or people that died in shows and video games. Yeah, so many to choose from. Yeah, really, so it was hard. It's hard to narrow it down. For those. Well, most video games, you're killing a lot of people, but sometimes you get really connected to NPCs, and then they die, and then your heart breaks a little bit. Yes. Yes, it's true. <laughs> uh, and then in theater, theater is just full of death. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Theater is way easier, although also harder because there's even more. Yeah, there's, it's harder there's to like... choose from because there's so many. There's so many. So many. Jesse, why don't you go first? I always go first with these things. First, but... theater or video games? You just pick. You just pick how we're going to start with. Let's start with video games because we always start with theater because it's easier. <laughs> it is. Video games. Speaking of growing attached to people, well, my, my two picks for, for this, one is abstract and one is specific. So my specific pick for deaths that have devastated me uh, in Dragon Age Inquisition. I knew it was going to be this... Dragon Age Inquisition. <laughs> I didn't know well, who, I mean, which character because I haven't I've... gotten through for the, the it's entire game. It's not going to be but, like uh, Zelda like, or like She got so or attached Mari. to the characters in that game, it's going to have to be one of them. I'm sure one of them died and like broke her heart a little bit. Yes. <laughs> um, this is a little bit of a spoiler, though. This is a spoiler. spoiler that... I'll put beep up some kind of like... Point. <laughs> but, well, I have really crappy editing software. By crappy editing software, I mean I have iMovie. We'll see whatever effect iMovie will provide. I will and I will just say spoiler now, alert. spoiler warning <laughs> for Dragon Age Inquisition. Ooh, stop now if you wish. Um, but yes, a particularly devastating moment is when you are in the Fade and it falls upon you to choose who lives or dies, Hawk or Stroud. And I find that no matter who I pick, and I've gone both ways because uh, I've played that game a million times, I'm uh, low-key devastated, <laughs> and it's just too dramatic, and I don't know what the right choice is, because I guess I would feel more connected to Hawk, but but I, I sometimes feel like you should save Stroud for the Grey Wardens, like they need to rebuild who will lead them, so it was a practical concern. So I always found that a tricky moment to navigate, especially for me, because as I probably have mentioned a million times, uh, I take video games way too seriously when I play them. 
from my perspective. And so my second pick would be uh, like anybody <laughs> that I have to kill who's not attacking me. Because listen, I'm happy to kill people who are attacking me. That's just common sense. And I'm happy to kill evil people because they're evil. But like, but like when you're playing Skyrim <laughs> and you want to join the Assassin's Guild and like you're just shooting people while they're like getting water for their day or like taking a nap. I start to feel real guilty and I have to unsave it. And I don't know why I'm broken in that way. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I am. Uh, for me, uh, I'm going to talk about the, the first, uh, video game death that ever like really kind of like shocked me. And like, it was like the first time I ever got really connected to a video game character and watched them die. was in like, uh, it was Call of Duty Big Red 1. A uh, lot of death in this game, obviously, because it's a yes. World War II video game. <laughs> so a lot of people are going to die. And uh, characters like characters just kept dying at like, pretty much every level, level when like, one of the main NPCs would die. Like I think maybe two made it out alive in the end, out of the original group from when you started. Uh, but we were on the last level, and there was this one character, Brooklyn, and he was he was comic relief, and you loved him, and he was just funny and great, and it was like, yeah, I was like, it's the last level, he's gonna make it, and then literally, like, literally, there's this, like, you get to this part in the level, and then literally, it's a cutscene, and you see Brooklyn, the only one moving, and I'm like, no, wait, no. No, no, it can't be happening. No, Brooklyn, what are you doing? And he's like, he's he's cut, cutting barbed wire uh, to like, get so you guys can pass through this uh, to move on to meet up with some other people, or whatever. And he, as he's doing it, he's like, I think I might actually make it home from this lousy war. Then suddenly mortars start falling, and he's like, shouting for everyone to take cover. And then, and you're like, don't him. set up that and dramatic like, no. IRV. <laughs> and someone calls out Brooklyn. And I'm like, no what the f no not brooklyn he was so close it's like the last level son of a bitch mm -hmm. so yeah that was the first major death that i broke my heart yeah it hurts it hurts, it hurts. you know in dragon age 2 like then you can talk to everybody and like they're all devastated to differing degrees and you're mm -hmm. like i did this to them it's my fault. yeah and uh, when I played through Mass Effect Two, uh, mm. which is similar, it's made it's made by Bioware, which is the company that makes. Yes, I've always meant to yeah. play it, except so I have no means to. Yeah. You will soon. Yes. Uh, in the end, like a lot of like the choices you make affect how people like. Like, there's this big mission at the end, and a lot of the choices you've made through and the, your connections with them will affect how the main characters get out alive. And so, like, knowing that people died, like, it's like, hey, they died. Like, it doesn't have any correlation to your death. Like, you're, like, you, really? But you know it's your fault. Mm -hmm. Because, like, if you do it perfect, if you do everything perfectly, the, everyone comes out alive at the end. Oh, dude, that happens in but Dragon you, Age, too. But if you don't, people will die in that last minute. It's not going to be your fault back. that they die, but you know yeah. it is your fault. It's like, Because you could have saved it. <laughs> What did I do wrong? Yeah. Oh, that totally happens in Dragon Age Inquisition um, when Haven burns down and you have to rescue everybody from the burning buildings, but you don't have to. Mm. And, like, you try, but they're in all different directions and they burn really fast. And once they're dead, they're dead forever. You know, Skyrim is kind of like that too. Not like you're so connected to people, but like, but like people will just get killed by accident. You yeah. know, like people you chose I, to travel I've been with. Yeah, I've been playing through uh, Skyrim again, and uh, I I just got my uh, I just had done the whole th uh, came Thane of Right Run. Nice. Uh, and so I got Lydia as my house, Carl. Yeah, Lydia. She never went on an adventure. I'm like, okay, we're gonna go kill these people. Like, the, oh god, uh, did she die? We're, yeah, we went and killed the like the red guard assholes that were like harassing the. Yeah, uh, fuck those me. guys. I don't know if she's actually guilty or not. I don't know, but I've always wanted to kill that. No, in the past couple times I've played it, I've never, I've always turned her in just because I can never kill the guys. But this time, I'm like, no, what? I'm gonna do it. And mm. uh, I finally like was able to find a way, and I killed them all. I was like, yeah, and they're like. Lydia's body's like floating near me. I'm like, you're like, oh, Lydia. Fuck. Lydia. <laughs> damn it. 
I got <laughs> Lydia killed. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely gotten some people killed and like been very confused yeah. about where they went and then had to go to like the halls of the dead and be like, no. Yeah. And that's why when I like when people there's sometimes like NPCs will be like, let me help you on this mission. I'll be like, fuck no, stay here. I don't want you dying. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That, and I also don't want you when I'm sneaking, you're gonna run in. I'm like, no, I'm yeah, being know, stealthy, right? you piece of shit. <laughs> I'm a stealth archer. What don't you get about that? And they're just ah! and you're like, stop. It. Just because I fired an arrow does not mean you get to charge in. No, right? They're super dumb, but I feel very responsible when they die. This is true. And then they're dead forever. Like, they're not and, anywhere. Uh, Once I accidentally killed, like, a shop owner, and then, like, I couldn't shop in that shop anymore uh, because the owner was dead because I killed him. By so accident, I have I'm to sure. Say this, uh, one thing I don't like about... I got the Skyrim Enhanced Edition, finally, because it was on sale. And that, it comes with all the, add, the, all the DLC and bonus content. And, and the, with all the DLC, you can adopt children and stuff like that. But now... I, now that, with that, because I'm in White Run, there's this girl that comes up to me and keeps asking me to adopt her. I'm just like, shut the fuck up, leave me alone. I don't want to adopt you. And if, if I do, say, I do finally say like, yes, I want to adopt you, so you can shut the fuck up. I don't have enough money to buy a house, and so I can't adopt her. And, but she still constantly asks me, can you adopt him? Like, no, I can't, because I can't afford a fucking house for you to live in. Leave me alone. Does this end with uh, you killing her? <laughs> you can't kill children. Oh, that's the worst part. <laughs> You know, what I do, or what I did, the one time I played Skyrim, is I had, well, I started to adopt every child I met, and I would just put them in a house, not the house where I lived, but, like, a different house once I had enough money, because, like, I didn't want to raise them, but I didn't want to, like, leave them out in the world either, mm-hmm. so I built them their own house. I think at some point I married somebody and let let that person stay with the children for guidance, and I just lived alone, which is my preference. Yeah. Um, but you can only adopt two, I thought, because yeah, uh, I felt really bad at some point that I had like just quickly adopted everybody instead of choosing the neediest children. But uh, what can but, you yeah. do? <laughs> some things are irreversible, like death. death. Unless you hit a save point, then it's probably fine. But yeah, death in video games, it hurts. It does. And this it is does. part of the reason why I've never played The Last of Us. Mm. that and i do not own a ps4 that would be the main reason i've never played it <laughs> <laughs> that's a good reason too <laughs> yeah but let's talk about death in theater Yay. oh where do we begin my goodness let's me start with shakespeare because shakespeare ah, has so much death in it god which one okay yes what's your pick for shakespeare for shake death in shakespeare um Um, now that I think about it, uh, trying to, oh God, I can't remember his name. I Give me clues. I'm ready. Uh, clues, clues, Romeo's clues. friend in Romeo and Juliet. Mercutio. No, uh, yeah, Mercutio. Yeah. I hate, like him dying, uh, always bothered me just because like, he has no real stake in any of this shit, but he mm-hmm. still dies. Yeah, pointless uh, death. And that always bothered me. And then he's like, also, oh, I, I like a scratch, a pick- scratch, and then he's dead. I'm like, yeah, oh. <laughs> I think <laughs> you that's lying piece I of shit. Go. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. I mean, I'm dying, but I saw you, scratch, don't scratch. trouble yourself. And with my dying breath, it's plague on both your houses, Blair. You just <laughs> said you weren't dying. You lying piece of shit. But yeah, no, I, I, his death always has always bothered me. Um, I like that you're picking Romeo and Juliet is neither Romeo nor Juliet. <laughs> nah, fuck them. <laughs> Yeah, they're pretty dumb. They were stupid. They need to communicate better. Well, technically, it's not Romeo's fault. It's yeah. Juliet needed to like drop a line about that crazy plan, though. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. So I probably would say that Hamlet has a lot of death in it. Uh, yes, but at some point you're yeah. almost like, yeah, but it's yeah, better this so way. So many people die, and. Ultimately, as long as Horatio didn't die, who's like the only like innocent person that I actually like in Hamlet, then it's and fine. he didn't. He didn't. That's that's why it's okay. Hey, hey, hey. Right on. 
My pick for Shakespeare would definitely be the death of Desdemona at the hands of Othello. Ah, yes. It's always, like pretty painful. <laughs> Just because it's like such a terrible trap that Iago so expertly sets. Um, Iago, the and, ultimate villain. Yeah, super fun, Iago. But um, it's pretty devastating. <laughs> always gets me although i have not seen it staged enough with hello what about outside of shakespeare pick a musical uh, death musical death uh this mm. it's too easy right because there are so many choices i think uh i have to go i'm gonna go specific to a production mm -hmm. uh and that would it be uh Michael Severus's death in Sweeney Todd, uh, because up until that point, as you know, uh, all the throat cutting and people dying had been every time they did that, if there was no blood on the, the neck. They would just like make a loud, high pitched noise and uh, pay the poem, pour a bucket of blood into bucket, of, bucket blood. of blood as oh, a God, symbol awesome. of someone getting their throat slit. Yes, it was awesome. Much cleaner, simpler. But when uh, Mike, um, Sweeney. I got his throat slit at the very end. Uh, there was no loud noise. It was just him. Like there, I mean, there was no blood, but it was him like choking and gasping, and it, like suddenly became more violent and real. It was like, oh, 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 oh. and I was like, oh shit, that that like kind of like struck me like, because like he had, had like all this come like heartbreak and everything that just came to fruition with him killing his wife and his seeing his daughter leave and whatnot and killing. Uh, Mrs. Lovett and whatnot. Spoilers, yeah. but you should really all know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> please, at this point. But yeah, watching him die was kind of like, it, it kind of like shuddered me. Because like all the other deaths, like you, it was like, okay, like they're going to show up, but not really show up. But him dying was like, they took the second, they, they made it, it was quiet. And like, it was so silent, all you could hear was just him choking and slumping over dead. Yeah. And that, I remember that well. Excellent production. Such a good production. Yeah. But yeah, that 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 particular death has stuck with me. It was good. So good. God. God, I'm so glad I saw that. Yeah. We were but youths so long ago. Um I I as as I was pondering this question for the last hour, did consider every death in Sweeney Todd. But then I decided instead to go even more mainstream, which I, I normally go less, but I'm gonna go even more mainstream and say a death that always, whether I want it to or not, hits me pretty hard is uh, in Les Mis, the death of Eponine. Because obviously everybody dies in Les Mis, but Eponine's death is like so pointless. <laughs> like God, I can't believe this Marius sent bitch, her why are with you a climbing up here. Get away. Get letter. Up here. <laughs> well, he like sent her with a note. He's like, oh my God. Okay, wait. You're here. Thank God you're here, Eponine. Take this note to the girl I actually like, who's not you. Thank you so much. And she's like, okay. <laughs> and then coming back, she's killed. I'm like Marius is pretty dumb, and it just, uh, it yeah. just cracks my heart a little bit. Every time. I always find myself, although I know Les Mis very well and I've seen it a billion times, uh, I always cry during it. I even cry when I just listen to the whole CD all the way through, which I only do on like long, long car rides. But uh, at some point, I just, I don't know. There's something about that play. It's magic. Tragic magic. Interesting. Yeah. I was assuming, uh, I was sure you were going to say something Sondheim related. Well, I thought about that first, and I have a million picks from Sondheim, but I figured, you know, I'd throw you a curveball instead of ranting about passion. Yeah, the fact, I, I was almost certain you were going to say Baker's Wife, but... Yeah, well, it, it doesn't really make me sad in the same way, although there yeah. are parts that are, are beautifully... God, I love that so much. Yeah, but that's, like, so sudden. I mean, she's like, ah, epiphany. Yeah. Ah, tree. <laughs> That's why it's uh, tricky to commit adultery in a fairy tale because everybody's gonna want to kill you after that. It's a bummer. Yeah. But love what are you gonna do. Joanna Gleason rocks. Play. Play. Oh, why didn't I think about play? So you go first. <laughs> um, I have a couple options. Uh, because one is a death that didn't actually. This doesn't happen during the play but, mm -hmm. uh, and doesn't actually happen 
uh, I have to explain this. Uh, when I was working at the Purple Rose, uh, we did a production of Annapurna, which I was the production assistant stage manager for. Mm -hmm. Annapurna is a two-hander two -hander play about this uh, guy who's living in a trailer in Colorado. Uh, he's a poet, uh, and he is recovering alcoholic, and he's dying of, I believe, lung cancer? Liver cancer? He's dying of cancer. He's cancer. Um, right he's dying. And his wife that he hasn't seen, or ex-wife that he hasn't seen in, like, I want to say, like, 20 years or so, probably more, uh, just shows up on his doorstep because uh, <laughs> their son, who he hasn't seen like in a long time just found out that like she was hiding all these letters that he had sent him and he was on his way to go see him but she he, he didn't know where she he he didn't the son didn't know where he was but she did so she went to him first and then that whole thing but in rehearsals for this uh even though the son's not a character it was implied that like in the like for the aspect of rehearsal i was the son Mm -hmm. uh, just to help set the things, set mm -hmm. the moods and things, and also at the end of the play, uh, she shows pictures of the son, shows uh, the guy pictures of his son on the phone on an iPhone. And mm -hmm. They showed her pictures of me that they took, so I was actually, so I was actually the son. <laughs> Aww, buddy. Um, can't but uh, in rehearsal for this one day, we actually went through and played out uh, the husband's death. Uh, with the, like, the sun coming, showing up, like having an argument, like like we like there were no words spoken, but it was played through like emotion, and like it was just music, and we were just walking the room with mm -hmm. emotions feeling, and then like us being there for the death of the father, husband slash husband, and it like emotionally scarred me. I bet so I much. Bet it, did. it was like it was really hard hard to do that, and for a long time, like there was a particular song that they played for it. Like while that was going on in rehearsal, that every time I listened to it, I was like, "Okay, I'm I'm crying right now, and I need to stop." <laughs> Never uh, need to stop. So that really hurt, and, and it was weird because like, like the death you knew he was going to die because his cancer was terminal, but mm -hmm. that doesn't happen in the play. It ends before the sun even arrives. Right. The right. sun isn't there. Right. Because you kind of know. Yeah, but they played out what it would be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact that I was a part of that, and it was such an intense, dramatic thing. Yeah. That we just, yeah, I we, we, just that. We, and we were all just going off of emotion at that point. Like there was no like we weren't told to do anything. I, I was told like to, to how to react if uh, the mother tried to come up to me and just like pull away every time. But mm -hmm. other than that, I was given very little direction. And it's, like same thing for everyone else. And it was Thanks, just really um... heartbreaking. And yeah. Beautiful. But yeah. yeah, that's a death that particularly it bothered, like it stuck with me in theater. And again, death didn't actually happen, but in rehearsals it did, and to me it really did. Yeah, yeah, um, man. But in terms of deaths that actually happen on stage, mm -hmm. uh, this one was harder. Uh, you do yours. You, uh, I, I will do me. because actually my pick is very similar to your pick. <laughs> Now, which is a death that does not even happen on stage and which we also had very emotional rehearsals about. Um, and so it would be Rabbit Hole, the death uh. of the, the son, Danny, um, which obviously is just the premise of the show, but it's dealing with that loss. And there are times that you think about it and it's just like so big that it just like crushes you in the way that it crushes the characters. Mm -hmm. um, and I directed Rabbit Hole in college and... Well, it was it was certainly like particularly um, like a like a painful time to do it. It was just in the wake of the um, the new the Newton shooting, um, which was pretty close to us in Connecticut. Um, and anyway, I was like a sadistic fuck director, as it were. And one of the things we did in rehearsal is that we we I had um, the parents the two people playing the parents print out a picture of uh, what they imagined their son would look like. And we had this printed out picture of Danny always in the room with us. Um, and near the end of our rehearsal process, I had the boy who played Jason, who in the play is the character who hit Danny with his car and killed him. 
um, like tear up the picture in front of them. And then all my actors burst into tears. God damn it, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was one of like my my more out there directing approaches, but I guess I wanted to tap into that grief. Um, but I probably didn't need to because clearly <laughs> it was there. <laughs> but I did do that. It was very tense. Um, and I felt it too. That play is one that always gets me. Mm-hmm. Because it's just like, I mean, I don't even really want children, but like you can still imagine the weight of that. And it's interesting because I remember when I chose to do Rabbit Hole in college, because obviously we're young to do that, uh, but I was just obsessed with it. Uh, And one of the grad students was like, you can't like do Rabbit Hole until you like can imagine, like you're not old enough to even know. And I I think that really we all have empathy and Mm -hmm imagining is part of what theater is and i think that our team really did imagine it was super painful but it was also not a death that happened on stage uh, i thought i remember what, what mine was because i remember thinking about it and no, this is an, again not really a death that happens on stage but more the reveal of a death happened on stage mm-hmm. and you're gonna get this because you like this play a lot proof Oh, snap! Good pick. That first scene when uh, she's there talking to her father, only for him to reveal that he's dead. And like, wait, what? But they just had this whole emotional thing. And then, and what does it say about her? And what? Huh? Yeah, it's a great ending. That's the beginning. Because I'm also dead, aren't I? Yeah, ending of the scene. I was going to say, the beginning. Ending of of the the beginning. (laughs) And she's like, so that means, and he's like, for you, my daughter, who I love very much. It could be a bad sign, and we're like, "What?" Like, like, yeah. So <sighs> that that stuck with me because, like, I didn't see it coming at all. It's just like a yeah, the weird, first time like, I read it, have like a close conversation with like like daughter, like son, a father and daughter, and like they're talking about math and whatever. It's weird, but they clearly love each other. And then, oh wait, she's dead. He's dead, and she might be crazy. Yeah, that's one of the. That, that is the play that made me fall in love with theater enough to make it my major. And I remember reading that scene, like, in the hallway of my theater building and just, like, verbally exclaiming some sort of shock when I got to that part. And I was like, what? And I did it again at the end of Act One when she's like, I wrote it. And I was like, what? <laughs> it was one of those plays that just shatters your mind. But, mm-hmm. yeah, death is very prevalent. I mean, the whole thing is around a funeral yep. and dealing with the aftermath. So it's a very deathy and very good pick. Proof is, is always probably my favorite play. Sometimes the best deaths don't happen on stage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sometimes we just feel their pulsating effects. Yeah. <laughs> Truth. Plus it can be hard to do. I'm, I'm struggling even to think of a play that has a death in it. I can think of a few that have deaths in it. Uh, 2AZ had a lot of death in it. Oh, I'm sure. The play I worked on, and that was fun. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that much, uh, but there's a lot of death in it. Uh, Anything by Arthur Miller. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for fucking sure. <laughs> Truth. Uh, you and I both saw... Uh, that was the first Broadway play I saw. Was um, um All My, all my Sons. First Broadway yeah, that play was good I saw. Push. I've seen it probably plenty of Broadway musicals. That was the yeah. first Broadway play I saw. And we saw it together. Yeah. Were we looking at an English field trip? Yes. I don't trip. know why Bridget wasn't there. Yeah, I don't know why Bridget wasn't there. And I feel like we've asked her as adults and I forgot again. Yes. And I'll never remember. Bridget, why weren't you why there? Why weren't you there? She doesn't watch this, but <laughs> no. we'll find out. Later. No, she doesn't. <laughs> but maybe we'll remember to ask her again. Yeah, certainly anything Arthur Miller. Uh, and there's there's a few. Oh, oh uh, I thought of an, uh, the one that, I, that was close, but like, that didn't really hit as home, close to me, home to me. But was that definitely very emotional. Uh Steel Magnolias. Oh, yeah. Good pick, good pick. I just feel like I can't even think of plays right now. And then we're going to finish this podcast and I'm going to think of 92 plays yeah. that have great deaths and text you a million times at midnight. Oh, well. <laughs> but death. Yeah, it happens. It can make for a powerful play. Or it video does, game. But don't you don't gotta force it in there. Video games yeah. most video games have death in it at this, yeah. point, at this point. It's just Absolutely. Yeah. From shooters to RPGs to 
Who knows? They just... Yeah, because that's like kind of the fun. <laughs> yeah. But they're not all devastating. It's really the ones with the plot. Like, I don't cry every time I, I kill a Koopa as Mario. <laughs> nah, please. I cried every time I played, like, uh, Left 4 Dead or something. Like, every zombie that I killed, they're already dead. Right. Then it wouldn't be fun. Yeah. It's um, only once uh, in a while. I'm going to leave everyone with this quote, which has become one of my favorite quotes in theater, that I want, if, I don't really want it to be buried when I die, but... If I were to have a tombstone, I'd want this written on it. Good to know. Good to know. uh, This is a quote from Blythe Spirit. Mm. I've always believed in cutting my losses. That's why I died. Oh, oh, oh. (laughs) good call. (laughs) I love that. uh, The audiences rarely laugh at it because it's just like, like kind of goes over their heads. And I I just think it's so, it's funny and it's witty. And it's like, ha, she's, it's funny because it's not true, but <laughs> <laughs> I've always believed in cutting my losses. That's why I died. <laughs> and it's funny. It's just it's uh, funny and smart. And I, I love that quote. I approve wholeheartedly. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Hell yeah. We'll try and get Tony back next week once Greece opens because <laughs> Greece. Ooh. <laughs> if you're watching, comment below with your most devastating death moment. Seriously, any comments? <laughs> we have never had one, no matter how much we ask. Mm-hmm. Why won't you comment? <gasps> Just do <laughs> it. It's so easy. <laughs> but no pressure. But yeah, do it, seriously. please. But no pressure. But do it. Ooh quick announcement uh we're submitting uh this podcast to the uh square square spaces uh casting call contest uh they have decided they are having a contest to for people to submit ideas for podcasts and uh, the top six will go get them workshopped in for six weeks in new york city and then the winner will get theirs produced by Squarespace. We so. will not win because it's specifically asking why should people listen to your podcast? I'm like, uh, <laughs> because I <laughs> want them to. <laughs> I, I was just like, how do I get people to watch a podcast or listen to a podcast about theater and video games that aren't people who like theater and video games? This podcast is only for people who like theater and video games. Uh, yeah. So we've Or else very... maybe it will spark an interest in theater or video games. You come for one and perhaps we hook you into the other one. Yeah. I mean, the ultimate goal is still, and always has been, getting an interview with Lynn Manuel Miranda. Because... I would die, though. Because <laughs> he's a big video game nerd and love that about him. <laughs> and he's literally perfect in every conceivable way so let me know miranda if you happen to be watching we don't know why <laughs> but if you are how did you end up here <laughs> seriously <laughs> can't imagine well thanks everyone we'll see you next week bye, bye.